Oh well. I don't know what to start with first. Wait a second. I always know what to start with. I should always start with thank yous. I need to thank people that make my show what it is <laughs> or what it's lacking. Let's see here. Professor. You, sir, you know what? You always win by six count. Oh, Professor Varado. Yeah, Professor Varado. You always win by six count. Help we. Help we! You're just a master of the air guitar. I know I'm gonna butcher this. Fabio, Fabio. Pacheco. Pacheco. That didn't sound, didn't sound as bad. You, sir, you, sir. can crawl out of here.
Ox Kahal. Don't even ask me how to say it. It's in Russian. You can just party with your brief ba- briefcase boombox. Right early angle. You always win by dirty pin somehow. And Moshe, and Moshe, yes, there's such a thing, such a thing. as the vaginal claw. The vaginal claw. But, yes, but yes, you're just a member of the El Generico band. So with all that being said, um, I've kind of a major important announcement to make. That major announcement is um, I tried to give you, my YouTube fans, Impact Hard to Kill with having a little mini box Probably something comparable to that. In the window, um, Impact said no, no, no. YouTube said, what the hell? So yeah, I'm going to be on my 90 day suspension. So let's see here. For 88 more days. Eight, yeah, I'll just say 89 more days. There will be no more live streaming from the one, the only Hobo Tom. Instead, I'm going to go old school. I'll do my good old-fashioned video reviews. So, yeah, that's it. Um, I think this is a good time. This was kind of a good time to get it kind of zonked, I guess. Mainly because... Let me scratch some things on my calendar. Mainly because there's not a lot of events I can cover. Um, yeah, there's the Royal Rumble. I'm not going to miss Triple Mania. I'm going to be at the races a lot. I'm going to be working a lot. I know next week, my boss said I have 38 hours at the one place. Turn around, do one, two, three, four, five days there. Friday, Saturday, it's the races. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, it's the races. Um, I got a week reprieve in February, and then I literally work five days of the races. Because, actually, this guy got a promotion. I'm going to be a crew lead. Finally. Finally, The Rock has come back to Daytona Beach. No. Yeah, I wish that was that, but yeah, sadly it's not that. But you know what? It's not too bad. Because I got promoted a little bit more of this. A little bit more hours. A lot more experience. And I cannot complain about it. Thank you very much. Um, I did try. I always do try to do my best at whatever job I try and do. This is a little fun side project. Eventually it might be something. Who knows? Um, (laughs) It depends on a lot of other factors that I can't control. Like getting a girlfriend. That's kind of important. Right? Rosemary. Diana Prazzo. And hey, Mickey James, I'd even sneak a night with you, okay? Although of course joking about thing joking about things aside, if she ever became Ashley Keller Flair. It was just mainly because I want to hear all of Ric Flair's stories and just say, actually, go get us something. Go get us a nice, cold, refreshing beverage from the refrigerator. Rick, 
Tell me about that time in Tennessee when you had to face Dusty Rhodes twice on the same day. That would be interesting. But with all that being said, um, let's take a quick pause because now it's going to be a little recap action from Impact Hard to Kill. So if I look distracted, it's because I'm actually looking at a whole different screen and there we go. Oh, there am I. I should keep that actually over there. But you there, so I know, so I don't talk too long. So part of this, some people were lucky to see. Um, who was it? Yeah, Fabio Pacheco. Yeah, and he was in the chat there while the chat was up. So let me recap things. Um, starting off in the pre-show for Hard to Kill, we had uh, Jake something versus Madman Fulton. Solid match. Nothing spectacular happened. Kind of great curtain jerker match. I could have done the same thing in the ring. It's not that great. Wasn't bad though. I can't complain. It was something to do while I was cooking my delicious turkey sub, turkey club sub that I had. For the most part, it was a ham sandwich of a match. Then all of a sudden, we have a number one contendership for the X Division belt. So we had Chris Bay, a Bullet Club. Oh, wait a second. There's only one proper way to introduce Chris Bay. There's only one proper way to introduce anyone from Bullet Club. So let's see here. Let me, let me start the whole editing process. Let's see here. Let me move microphone a little bit closer. And wait for it. Here it comes. Very soon. There we go. So now I can say with pure confidence. So the first participant is that we had Chris Bay of, of course, the Bullet Club. Because he's too sweet for life. Gun. There we go. Seriously, I don't need that anymore. Actually, I will need it. So, yeah. We'll get back to that. Uh, my other stuff so I can see what the hell I'm doing. Yeah, it was Chris Bay. Again. Because he's Bullet Club 4. Uh, taking on Ace Austin, taking on Mike's um, Speedball, Mike Bailey. I have not seen him since actually his days in WCPW. And then we had Laredo Kid from Triple A. So good to see those wrestlers from Triple A getting their work in. I'm happy to see that. This was a fun match. I couldn't believe what a good time this was. Uh, Mike Bailey, even though he didn't feature a lot, he was. They're the key points. Again, being too sweet is too cool. Um, and Laredo Kid is... Oh, I can't even describe Laredo Kid's moves. I hope you guys can manage to see some of that. Speedball Mike Bailey won. Bold move by Impact Wrestling. Impact Wrestling always treats the wrestlers coming into the league... Or this considered, I'll call it a territory, special. They don't bury people like AEW's done absolutely nothing with Jay Lethal, who could be such a huge boon to them. They've kind of begun the burying of, of Ruby Beaver, or Beaver Soho, I mean Ruby Riot. No, Heidi Lovelace. Ah, Ruby Soho. But yeah. So they've, they've almost buried her. Um, who else from the WWE? Really hasn't gotten a great rub. I don't know. A few of them have been like, meh. Nothing great. Jake H Jake Hagar is, yeah. We haven't seen him wrestle in a while. Again, they're burying Paige. And, um, not, not so much Paige, but, but Adam Cole. I don't know. They have to figure out what they're doing with Adam Cole. I'll tell you what though, this all this 
X Division match. Awesome match. Mike Bailey won. Nice shock. Surf and turf match. So that was a pre-show. So I'm like, ah, half hour done. Still doing this live. Things are good. And then we start off the show. What did we start off the show with? The Women's Ultimate X Match. This was weird because you had these six women. It was Tasha Steeles, Lady Frost. There was no racial. There was no racial honoring there. Alicia Edwards, Rosemary, Jordan Grace, and Chelsea Green. So yeah, Tasha Steeles, Lady Frost, Chelsea Green, Alicia Edwards, Rosemary, and Jordan Grace. I don't know what happened to Rachel Ellering. Uh, maybe she's off making my sister's t-shirt that I ordered on Pro Wrestling Tees. For, for next year's Christmas gift because I could use my credit card again and I said screw this I'm getting Christmas shopping done now so I'll have pretty soon I'll have three gifts done and, and to start off the new year that's awesome this was a fun match um, Lady Frost is really good I'll tell you what Jordan Grace man she's strong because she tried to walk hand over hand on that rope that is not easy there are grown people in the military that have issues doing that uh tasha seals was smart she used her legs there was this moment where tasha seals and i think it was chelsea green were like fighting upside down spider-man style rosemary's rosemary's not doing that let's be real rosemary got a little thick for that she's not as well muscled as Jordan Grace and I did find an amazing picture by the way of Jordan Grace in like some leather bikini outfit I'm so evil but it's so good but she's so good looking the Rachel Ellering's just cute again I have Santana Garrett's Santana Garrett's the cutest one I have her autograph up there on the door of wrestling which is always cool to see um Tasha Seals won she kind of like fell down and held on to, to the big red X. So she gets to challenge whenever she wants to on um, the woman's title. And we'll see how that goes. Not a bad match. I've seen much more exciting ones. It's different. It adds some stuff to it. Cheeseburger match. And then we get to the proper X, X division championship match uh trey miguel versus steve macklin fun match uh steve macklin much more grounded trey miguel's much more aerial um it took two meteors to finish off steve macklin that was fun that was good that oh, so so many highs and lows steve macklin showing off his strength trey miguel showing off his speed and agility surf and turf match any day of the week But I think this is when Impact stepped in and said, no, 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 and booted me off. And I'm like, oh, whatever. Uh, we had, shoot, there we go. I did terrible in predictions, by the way. Uh, Jonathan Gershom defeated Chris Saban for the Ring of Honor belt under Pure Rules matches. That was a fun match. It was good to see something different. It's good to see a real wrestling match as a contest. Not just a, you know, it's not a street fight. It's not contrived. It's that nice in between wrestling ground. Solid match. Cheeseburger match. There were no Iconics or Inspiration. The Iconics probably got banished back to Australia. They tend to do that every so often when there's like plagues going around. So then we had, um, this match was okay. Josh Alexander taking on Jonas. I'm surprised Jonas tapped out. That was weird. Jonas was definitely taking it to Josh Alexander for most of the match. Again, Jonas showing off his size and strength, but yet being very agile. 
Josh Alexander, again, the walking weapon. Very skilled as well. Can't take anything away from him. But yeah, this is, I don't know. It was weird that Jonas, again, he had his spotlight. And I think for the rare instance... Impact probably dropped the, the ball a little bit, although I don't know if he's off to New Japan. This was just like that one-stop shop. But, yeah. Again, I can't complain about this match. God knows I can't do that stuff. Cheeseburger match. Oh, and then... Yep, we had the... Oh no, we don't have yeah. We have the full metal mayhem match of two teams. So this is weird. It's like Impact is trying to copy WWE, but yet doing it in such a way where it's different and they're using a different name. So it was the Good Brothers, again they're too sweet. Cause they're originally for life. Along with Violent by Design, that's Joe Doring, the man with the graveliest voice, Eric Young, and Diener. Taking on Heath Slater, Rhino, Eddie Edwards, Willie Mack, and Rich Swan. What this what this actually was, it was like war games without a cage. And it wasn't as good as War Games Without a Cage. Mainly because there was no cage. They did War Game Rules where it was Diener versus, I think, Willie Mack started off. For three minutes, the 90 seconds later, someone else came in from one team. 90 seconds after that, someone else from the other team. So they did the alternating team thing. It was war games without being war games, without the cage, single ring, and they could bring like weapons and stuff in. So I'm like, oh wait, war games, but no cage and no shark cages. They just come out of the back. It's a watered down version of war games. wasn't a bad match. It's what you expect. What what you'd expect. Uh, Heath Slater, I think the face is won. No, who won? I actually think, yeah, the face is won. Because that was like the one match I got, I guess, right on. But then, the king, oh yeah, they won. Because then the kingdom and righteous from Ring of Honor. It's a Ring of Honor invasion came out. And they beat up everyone. And Maria Canales' ass is still absolutely amazing. For the two two or three kids she's had already. Yes. Oh, yes. Madis yes. You know what? Maria Canellis, I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy. So yeah. Um overall, you know what? A cheeseburger match. And then it got weird because then we had the Impact Championship was not in the main event, but it was Moose. Wait, Moose versus Woo Woo Woo. Matt Cardona versus Big Cass. Uh, Moose won this. This was actually really fun. They got the weapons involved. Chelsea Green showed up. Probably bad idea for Chelsea Green to show up. But yeah, she tried to distract, help her man win. Then she just stayed there at ringside. But, of course, the one, the only, Moose. Dun, 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 dun. Moose from Moose Nation. One, as well it should be, he retained his belt. This was a fun match. I, um, it kind of did a little bit of everything in this match. For a triple match with big guys. You know what? It was fun, though. I enjoyed it. Cheeseburger match.
The only down of this pay-per-view was the Knockouts Champions match. Only because it was a te Texas death match. And the w rules were utterly confusing and confounding. As far as I know, a Texas death match might as well be a last man or woman standing match. But they only count if they're told to after a pin or submission. But a pin or submission doesn't win the match. It's weird. Um, because when I first when I first was watching this, first of all, it took <laughs> Mickey James eventually got serious because she took her chaps off. So to see Mickey James's bare leg was good. Uh, the Virtuosa, I swear that top was going to come off in a moment's notice. She had to put some super glue or rubber cement on that knot. Because I don't know how that flimsy t-shirt top knotted up in the back, held everything up under such duress. Um, Mickey James first submitted to the Venus de Milo. And I'm like, Deanna Pratt's the one. Yeah, I got another prediction right. And they're like, and the ref's counting. I'm like, why, why is the ref counting? And then she gets up at eight. And, oh, she got up at eight at the eight count. I'm like, huh? It's like, remember, this is a Texas death match. We're just going to make it the rules as we go. So if you get submitted, you have 10 seconds to get up and answer the count. So if you get knocked down, you have 10 seconds. If you get pinned, you have 10 seconds. And if you get submitted, you have 10 seconds. I don't know. That's, that's kind of convoluted and a little too complex, especially for the end of the night. After, I, after I, I'm fully, I'm full with my turkey club sub and multiple glasses of tequila and Mountain Dew. Which, by the way, is still the greatest drink ever. Wow, this video is getting long. So yeah, um... Mickey James did pin uh, the Virtuoso. She had 10 seconds to get up. Uh, weapons got involved. Mickey James got busted open first. It looks like she did that herself. Deanna Prosser gets busted open a little bit later. And then... <laughs> Deanna Prosser, the old school... Lick. Yeah. And just literally, I don't even know how you would, how I could replicate it, but gave her the, just, she just gave her, she just grabbed Mickey James' cooch. She gave Mickey James the vaginal claw. Um, eventually, though, Mickey James beat up Deanna Parazzo enough. She couldn't answer the 10 count. She buried stuff on her. Mickey James is going to the Royal Rumble with the Knockouts Championship belt. This is going to be really good for Impact. We'll see what happens. We'll see if he's allowed to wear that wear said belt for the Royal Rumble. This match was weird, though. The rules were confounding. They just tried to copy all the blood and stuff of the Alley Penelope Ford versus Anna Jay and Ty Conti match, which is still the most arousing, I mean special, match I've ever, women's match I've ever seen. It fell flat to me. It was just a ham sandwich of a match. With that being said, that was Impact Hard to Kill. Overall, it was a good cheeseburger. It was a pretty entertaining show. Unfortunately, Impact doesn't like me. Anthem doesn't like me. They don't like boot people out for showing like miniatures of their show. I can quasi understand it, but you know what? They better get with it nowadays, but who knows? So you know what? Let's take a little break. Okay, so now it's time to stop messing around. And then we get to the real show, Raw. Oh, wait. Uh, before we go on to Raw, um, my my predictions for Impact Hard to Kill, you know what? I had no clue what I was talking about. I was just a mark.
Which I guess it's good because at least not, it's not Impact isn't as predictable as WWE is sometimes. Um, AEW tends to be the most predictable though. But now let's talk about Monday Night Raw. So this was actually a kind of fun show. I'm surprised. Monday Night Raw went a lot quicker than I thought it would. Starts off with Brock Lesnar cutting a promo because Bobby Lashley's there with MVP. Um, they start talking trash. Brock tells a knock-knock joke. <laughs> Paul Heyman's like, the hell's this? I've lived long enough to listen to hear a Brock Lesnar tell a joke in Philadelphia? Oh, he got such a pop for that. And the, so, so the joke goes, Brock goes, knock, knock. And, of course, Paul Heyman says, who's there? Brock says, Bobby. Brock goes, Bobby who? Yeah, that's exactly what I mean. Oh, burn. That was good, though. And then, for some reason, Shelton Benjamin and Cedric Alexander come in. Oh. And they decide to jump. Bobby Lashley, he's having none of that. He's upset. He's He's been humiliated. It probably one of the worst cities to get humiliated in. The city of brotherly hate itself, where they chant, Tease him, tease him, and throw bottles of Grey Goose at celebrating people. Ah, oh, dirty drunk. The home of the dirty, drunk, disgusting, filthy, Philly fan. Boo, Philadelphia. The only city ever to boo, throw beer bottles at, and throw batteries at Santa Claus. No wonder Philadelphia never wins anything good. But yeah, so so that was that was a pretty cool hot hot start. Brock's getting better on the mic. Brock's getting to that point. Or at one time, it was all physical ability, and his mic skills were down here. Again, this just takes age and experience. Now it's kind of mellowing out a little bit. Still physical, but his mic skills are getting much better. And of course, he has Paul Heyman on his side. Um, our first match, so we had RK Bro talking the other day, Hey, man, we gotta get on the same page. And then Randy Orton just writes on his hands, Tag in Randy. As that little like cheat, as that cheat note. So we had RK Bro taking on the Alpha Academy. This was fun. Riddle, uh, Matt Riddle and Chad Gable start the match. Matt Gable flies. He does the put. They do the pose, the way that only Riddle and Randy Orton, Orton can do. Uh, Randy gets in. Again, that snap body slam so good. He couldn't hit the draping DT on Chad because. Otis kind of grabs that. I won't know, but Otis kind of acts as a distraction. Chad's got Crosh on the top rope. He's going to go for his great moonsault. And Chad Gale does have a great moonsault. He gets Crosh on the top rope. Orny goes up there. Superplex. Even better than his daddy would. That's a pretty good, that's a pretty big compliment. Knowing that, that cowboy Bob Orton was a master of the superplex. Uh, eventually... Randy gets a try because Otis tries to grab Randy Orton. He's going to RKO Chad Gable. Um, Otis and Comp gets tagged in the blind tag. He compacts Randy Orton. And we have new WWE Raw Tag Team Champions. It took the sacrifice of Tucker Knight for Otis to get a belt. Wow. Otis, was it worth it? I hope it was. But yeah. New, the Alpha Academy. New Raw Tag Team Champions. We'll see what happens to RK Bro over the next couple weeks. That was fun. That was unexpected. Just a pure shock. You know what? Because it was a pure shock. I'll bump it up. It's a surf and turf match.
And that's saying a lot, because you have a surf and surf match to open up Raw. That's pretty impressive. Then we have Damien Priest declaring for the Royal Rumble. We got a break, and then Bianca Belair. Well, I don't have hair, so I can't mimic what she does. It's, it's, mine's kind of missing somewhere. It's gone the way of the dodo bird. Yeah, Bianca Belair also declares for the Women's Royal Rumble. So we'll have that. Then we have uh, Dolph Ziggler, Robert Roode, and Apollo Crews, along with Sergeant Aziz. He needs to get his. He needs to go from green to gold. Not have his green. Not have his red sergeant stripes. No, no, no. Uh, taking on Damian Priest and the Street Profits. This was actually a fun match. Um, Cruz Gorilla presses forward. That's always impressive. You, when you can pick up another grown man, and I'm not talking about a Marco stunt. I'm not talking about a Riho. I'm talking about a grown man. A 210, 220-plus pound man. And press him over your head. That's impressive. And then just drop him in a somewhat controlled fashion. You'll always get, you'll always watch me mark out for that. That was great to watch. And Dolph, you know what? Say what you will about Dolph's ludicrous selling. He, he has that standing drop kick, and he makes it look so sweet, so perfect, so flawless. Dolph still has all the athletic ability as anything. He just has like over the top comedic selling. Sometimes. And that just takes away from it. Uh, Robert Roode is nothing but glorious. I'll defend, I'll defend until I'm victorious. I'll defend, I'll defend. That's still one of the best themes to sing to. Again, I like to go back in my archives and just listen to the old NXT themes. I miss NXT. Oh, yeah. I'll get to my rant and rave at NXT at the very end, because I saw something very disturbing about NXT. Yeah, um, uh, he has that great standing drop. Kid Dawkins, he gets a hot tag, the dual tag. Robert Root gets in, he gets beat up. Um, everyone feeds themselves to Angelo Dawkins. I, Aziz distracts the priest for a little bit. Dolph wins with, with a zigzag. When was the last time Dolph won with a zigzag? That's impressive by itself. This match is a cheeseburger match. Then we have a little Roman Reigns recap from SmackDown. I had to work, so I didn't see that. Um, I'll also give an update as to most, most of like this week's going to be on the fly anyway, so we'll see. Then we had Seth Rollins and Big E. Um, Big E obviously endorses sports gambling because he's like, yeah, I, I put a $10 spot on you, Seth, to win. Whoa. Sports gambling is, is for real degenerates, okay? If you want to go gamble, just play the lottery once in a while or go to the casino. Sports gambling is kind of shady stuff. So but the next match was Seth Rollins versus Big E. This was fun. Uh, Big E, again, uh, he gets beat up by Seth Rollins because Seth Rollins goes after Big E to begin with. They go to break. We come back from break. Big E you know, is beginning to beat Seth up a lot. Um, Seth jumped on him, but from the one camera angle, it looked like he missed. I don't know what. That was just probably the wrong camera angle. He did a little too soft. Uh, Seth has a great flying knee, though. Say what you will about Seth Rollins. Once he gets in the ring, that's pretty good. You know, he got he got taken down by a fan. That's that's terrible. Seth's here just like sprawled and, and cleaned his clock. That's what they did in the old days. I miss the old days. My big E eventually overpowered Seth. Seth hit a splash. Um, and then Seth's boots started to come off. That was funny. Big E went for the stretch muffler, but no. Seth Rollins eventually hits a curb stomp and wins the match. Very surprisingly, uh, Big E has to go back to the New Day. 
So that's pretty good. Seth Rollins celebrates. Solid match. Cheeseburger match. Then we had Nikki Glenn cross and Rhea Ripley in the middle of the ring. Nikki's like, I'll always be your friend. Rhea, Rhea Ripley's like, you know what? I'm so disappointed in us. I think it's time for us to break up. And I'm like, oh my God. So this is what a breakup looks like from a third person perspective. Wow. This is terrible. But yet, so utterly amusing. Um, so again, they, they tease the breakup. They, 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 they hug it out. But then eventually, Nikki Glenn Cross goes somewhat Nikki Cross. Becomes Nikki, almost a super villain. This will set things up probably for WrestleMania. You'll have um, Rhea Ripley taking on uh, Nikki Glenn Cross. Hopefully, Nikki Glenn Cross gets a little bit darker, a little more sinister. Maybe she starts to bite people, use the vaginal claw. Oh no, we 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 don't want to go into that territory. But yeah, maybe she bites someone in the head. That would be pretty cool. Six. A screwdriver in one of the, the bullet holes in um, Rhea Ripley's ear. That would be cool to see. Yeah, pulls, pulls Rhea Ripley up by her like snake bite piercing. And Rhea Ripley, she has some weird shaved eyebrows. I don't know, I don't know if it's scars or it's from where piercings used to be that she really probably shouldn't have in a wrestling ring. Um, but yeah, that was good. Then we had Nick Sanders, who we were all joking at in, in um, the Discord, who looks like the next AEW TV champion, taking on Omos. Yeah, I don't even care. This was a squash match. This this was uh, this was a ham sandwich. Then we had Edge give a promo. Miz and Maurice comes out. Jeez. Two kids later, it's Maurice boobies grew like five times over. Maurice is hot. Why would you ever get a vasectomy? You could do other things to Maurice. You don't have to go in there. There's a back door on her face, on her legs, on her boobies, in her hair, up her nose. In the ear, in the mouth. Wait a second. Wait a second. Yeah, I, I got distracted there for a moment. Again, Maurice is very distracting. So eventually, um, the Miz starts saying, "Yeah, well, I think his wife's gonna do him." And Maurice just like kind of like backs away and leaves. It's Beth Phoenix. That haircut is not well suited for Beth Phoenix. Edge is like, "Yeah, you know what? After my wife beats me, she's gonna beat you, and then beat Maurice." It's like, after she. He's like, oh, Edge, we don't need to know anything about your personal interpersonal relations with your wife. Tranquilo. But yeah, so that was pretty good. Then we had Austin Theory taking on the phenomenal AJ Styles. And this is actually pretty good. Um, Again, Austin Theory said, yeah, Vince McMahon said, don't disappoint. Don't you dare disappoint me. So yeah, Austin Theory versus AJ Styles. So this is a fun match. AJ Styles gets beat up early by Austin Theory. Austin Theory comes right out of the gate, jumps him. AJ Styles makes his comeback. Uh, Austin Theory has that great cross-legged neck breaker. That's fun. And then just as AJ Styles goes out, lowers, lowers to expose his whole form. For the phenomenal forearm shot. Ooh, that's pretty that's, that's tight sounding. That's good. Grace and Walla hits the Grace and Walla effect on AJ Styles. And it just sounded like an Aussie. Why couldn't he go to Australia? And we keep that Iconics. I would rather see the Iconics versus Grace and Walla. And I won't be able to see that match because I have to work that night. Yeah, I closed that night. So yeah, it's a dusty finish, the dusty cheeseburger, baby. 
Mainly because it's an AJ Styles match. AJ Styles is all cheeseburgers. With barbecue sauce on it. Because he's from the South. Then we have the Alexa Bliss is in the mental health rehab section. And then she just like loses it. She's like, how, do you, how did you feel about that last moment? I feel thirsty. The only thing she should have done better was throw the glass of water at, at the doctor. But she, she over pours, breaks the pitcher, breaks the keyboard. I don't know, throws a bowling ball at him. Who knows? Um, the rehab of Alexa Bliss. This is going to take some getting used to. It should be okay. Again, somewhere there are a thousand WWE writers creating this. And I swear all would take... There's 10 monkeys at 10 typewriters and they could come up with the same stuff. Um, then the main event, we had big time Becky Lynch who for some reason is getting skinnier and skinnier and skinnier. And when she wore her pants, I could not find her belly button nor could I find her ass crack. Which, wait a second. That's, that sounds bad. But yeah, when she was running sideways, when she was running, I'm like, wait a second. Her view from behind is the same as the view from the side. That's not good. Hey, Becky, you want to have a couple of those cheesesteaks there in Philadelphia, sweetheart? That and some pretzels. Yeah, and a yingling or two. In your case... Maybe five. But yeah, Becky Lynch, somehow she had a kid and she got smaller. Like, everything's getting smaller. Which is the opposite of Maurice. And Maurice, certain parts of her got bigger. And, and more more grabby. And, and more, I want to stick my head and go, oh, Wait, I don't know. No, I, I, I digress. I should never say things like that about another man's wife. There's, there's, a, there's a very cold place in hell waiting for me when I go. But yeah, um, so so she was there. She was on commentary. She has her jacket with her coats stuck on the sleeves. That was like, what? Moshe said, why are, there, why are there rabbits on her sleeves? No, those aren't rabbits. Those are goats. Huh? Why? Who knows? But this led up to the main event, um, the triple threat to see who gets to face um, Rebecca Becky Lynch at the Royal Rumble. Uh, it's between Bianca Belair, Drop, and Liv Morgan. At least Liv Morgan looks like a natural woman. She looks like a normal woman. Drop's a little on the heavier side. And Bianca Belair is a little skinny and has too many abs for me. Um, so it starts off, Dewdrop uh, just beats up both Liv and Bianca does a double fun splash into him. That was pretty cool. Um, Michinoku Driver is Bianca Belair. Then she used Liv as a weapon. It's always fun to watch the big wrestler use a small wrestler as a weapon. That's always fun to see Liv. She tried the turtle stomp. Stomp! Did not work. Um, Liv eventually gets rolled up. And there was a good triple team spot. That was fun. Then, then it just got bocce. It got a little sloppy. Um, Dewdrop, Powerbomb, Liv. Bianca did the 450 splash to break that up. Then there was like a Benny Hill chase scene. Where like Liv Morgan or Bianca Belair was like chasing a very skinny and emaciated Becky Lynch around the ring. Yeah, Yakety Sax should be playing right now. And then Dewdrop just splattered poor Liv with the Vader, with the, the Yokozuna bomb. Dewdrop's going to face Rebecca Lynch, or Becky Lynch, at the Royal Rumble. And I'll tell you what, that was the most forgettable part of Raw. That was a ham sandwich of a match.
There we go. Um, let's see. I guess the second part of the major announcement. This week I am very much playing it by ear. I have absolutely no clue what I'm doing this week. Um, this video should be up, well, in a few more hours. When I wake up, I'll, I'll put it on YouTube for everyone to watch and enjoy. Uh, tomorrow I have to work the races. And the way the races work is that I get to leave when the race is over. Who knows when that will be. Wednesday, um, that's Tuesday, so I do not know if I'm going to catch NXT. I kind of doubt it, though. Wednesday, I know I'm not watching anything because I have to close that night because I'm there 1 to 8.30. Thursday night? Thursday, I'm going to be doing, again, a review of Impact because, again, I can't go live streaming because of my ban. Because I was naughty. Just spank me, Liv Morgan. I'd rather have you do that. Oh, wait a second. I shouldn't say that. Friday, I have absolutely no clue what I'm doing. Because I have to go for training at night. From like, I think it's 5.45 till 9.45. I really should check that though. Because this has been the first time in two and a half years that I've had to cancel one of my work shifts at the store. Or even change it. And it's the first time in a very long time that the boss has received more than two hours notice. That someone can't show up to work. Sometimes it'll be like a day advance. But yeah, I actually gave her like four solid days. Like, hey, I can't make it. Can I reschedule myself? And she actually did reschedule me. Because Saturday I work 10 to 5.30. That's kind of going to be, that's going to hurt. Uh, Friday... I should be able to get my Rampage review in, I think. And that should be super short because there's only like three matches. Next week. I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. I won't know probably until Wednesday. So yeah, I'll leave it at that. Again, I do apologize. I tried to do everything for you, my, my loyal fans out there. Anthem does not like me doing stuff like that, though. So with that being said, cheers to everyone out there. Um, hmm. Also, probably Tuesday. Yeah, actually, probably by Wednesday. Yeah, definitely by Wednesday. I should have it by Wednesday. I'll show you a little bit of the next generation racing, racing stuff. So, yep, you guys will actually get to see a little video, a little alternative video. So you know, this one, the Wednesday one, whatever I do racing-wise, um, Thursday review, yeah, that's not bad. Four videos is actually pretty good for someone who's not monetized by YouTube, goddammit. But yeah, other than that, I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Please like, share.